All right, YouTube. Um, so today I want to talk about Trump's State of the Union address. <clears throat> Took notes. Um, but I don't want to just talk about it from like start to end because like um, I have something I want to talk about. So I'm waiting for the fuckery that I know is Trump. And um, it came like a half hour in. I had to wait for a while. It was an hour and 20 minute speech. And then it was like, drum roll, here comes the clown show. He brought two African-American families to the State of the Union address and talked about how these two families have lost their daughters to gun violence at the hands of MS-13, which is like a um, popular gang, I think from like El Salvador, or Guatemala or something like that. Um, not necessarily Mexican at all. So I don't even know why he chose them. But um, it was the only time that he really spoke to um, black people. The rest of the speech, he only spoke to Americans. So if you are black American and you felt included in that, then fine. Um, he didn't even say black, though. What he said was, um, <clears throat> what he said was the immigrants bring drugs and gangs and make low-wage workers have to compete for jobs, and they've killed people. And then the camera panned to the family that was visibly black. Um, and they were crying. It was a very emotional moment. He was really trying to uh, manipulate uh, Black America to start this war that he wants to have with immigrants and Mexicans. Now, um, don't fall for it. Do not fall for it. Do not fall for it at all. White racists have been training poor whites uneducated whites um, to attack black people for a long, 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 long time. A year ago when Trump started this, his presidency, <clears throat> his white supremacist base was definitely rallied. They were going to different towns, harassing people, um, really spreading terror. Clearly, the Republican Party has put the reins on Trump and he's no longer allowed to do this. So all that Charleston stuff is no more. That's not going to happen anymore. That's over. If they do it, they'll do it without him as their leader. That's over. What he wants to do now is he wants me and you, if you're black, he wants us to go do his dirty work. He wants us to get out on the streets and march with him and rally around the idea of immigrants going home so that we can have the low-wage jobs that are back-breaking outside all day, uh, you know, working till your skin falls off. That's what, that's what we should be fighting for. Um... I don't even want to, like, I'm not, like, a politic-type person. Like, I don't like this shit. Like, like I said, politics to me is just fighting with words. I'm done with words. I'm gonna be ready to whoop somebody's ass for, for pulling that shit. Um, so I'm not even going to, like, try to pull on your heart like Trump did. and Because the stories are real. Like, if, you, if you're a human and you have a heart, of course you're gonna feel some type of way, okay? But what I want you to think about is logistics. Just logistics. If something happens in this country, <clears throat> and I mean something as in like some type of war, we had so many times we were close. Baltimore got ugly. Ferguson got ugly. Like it could get ugly anytime. Like you never know when you know, a Rodney King type videotape is going to come out or some bullshit's going to happen. It could be any fucking day, right? Who's going to sell you your guns? Who's 
who's gonna sell you your guns? Like, we all know this is America. When shit goes down, it's going to turn into fucking cowboy type shit. It's just going to be a fucking shootout. Like, that's how we won everything. A fucking shootout. Like, that's how that's how we even have America. Like, we had to shoot it out with some fucking Europeans. You know what I'm saying? So, if something happens and you have to always be mindful that something's going to happen. This shit can't be like this forever. This... This whole nation is just built on such a shitty fucking foundation. I mean, the, the wow. graves. Graves. This is not sturdy. Do you know what I'm saying? So, if something happens or when something happens, who do you think is going to sell you your wow. guns? Because <laughs> you don't make them. we seen in Ferguson when shit was popping off, people couldn't even go and purchase the guns that they had already had on layaway. People couldn't even go back to the pawn shops and get their guns that they had pawned. Okay? So we already know how white America is going to treat us if something happens. You're not going to give us access to our weapons. The only chance that we're going to have is going to be Mexicans in Mexico. Canada is not going to come and save us. There's an old saying... The enemy of my enemies is my friend. So, <clears throat> thought that was interesting. Not interesting. I, I I was waiting for that. I was waiting for something to happen. When he started off the um this speech, he was very like presidential. You know, he wanted to show the Republican Party that he's not a fool, he's not a clown, that he's mentally sane. You know, they've been sending the doctor over there to do his checkup. So he wanted to prove that he's healthy. He's saying, you know, he stood up there for an hour and 20 minutes and, you know, gave his speech. He didn't go off. He didn't say, I mean, all of his talking points were approved. Okay. That's a big difference between Trump before and Trump now, a year later. That sex scandal, um, the, the remarks about uh, it being uh, shithole countries and all that, all that's over. All that is over. And you could see it visually. And the way that Pence and Ryan were like tight right here when the camera shot. You know what I'm saying? You can tell that um, Trump was literally only talking to his supporters, Republicans, because that's not the same thing. He talked to his reporters, he talked to the Republicans, and he talked to Pence supporters, the, the faith people, you know? So um, he did not talk to me. He did not talk to Democrats or anything like that. The only olive branch he gave to the democrats was like his blue tie that was his i'm um, being bipartisan do you know what i'm saying um but other than that trump was on one he was on one he um he started off talking about the heroes i mean just basically things we can all agree on right the soldier the hero the kid that put the flag on the graves you know um things like that he talked about america's so great rah 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 we're so this we're so that blah 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 um, but I do want to make note that it's a year later and because he doesn't have any accomplishments of his own, because he doesn't have any examples of his own heroism, he has to pull on other people. Like he can't talk about anything heroic that he did, not during the flood, not during any type of crisis event, not during the Los Angeles, uh, Las Vegas shootings, none of that. So, um, it was really touching to see like, you know, just different types of Americans doing different things for people, helping people. But I do want you to remember, like, those achievements are not Trump's. Those achievements belong to those people. Those acts of heroism belong to them. That's they, that's nothing that Trump can claim. Do you know what I'm saying? So, um, he tried. He tried, though, but he, he couldn't do it. And I think what he was also trying to do was get the women back because... You know, he's got this porn star scandal in the news and he has to show women that he has a heart. He's not a perv. Like he's a real man. He cares about family. He cares about, you know, humanity. He has, you know, he's, he's trying to show his soft spot. Did he tear up? No. Um, did anything sound like 
I mean, his thank you sounded sincere as could possibly be. Was it like moving or touching? Did I cry? No, and I cry very easily, and I was not crying. There was one point, but again, it wasn't him. It was the um, the soldier who like did CPR for like two hours and, you know, save the man's life and I have a CPR story where I performed CPR on somebody and they died so that kind of moved me but other than that mm -mm. so um I'm just looking at my notes okay back to some more juiciness so in general there was a it was like church there was a lot of standing clapping standing sitting clapping standing sitting clapping standing sitting clapping right I mean, it was so awkward, like, Pence and Ryan, the two behind him, didn't even know, like, sometimes whether they should be standing or not. Like, usually Pence would be the first one to jump up, because he seems like he was more into it. Ryan was, like, half dead. He seemed, like, more into it. He would jump up, then Ryan would jump up, whatever. But, um, the crowd reaction was pretty even, right on all the claps they all clapped when they were supposed to it was pretty even the jeers and the hurrah and like the excitement came when trump said we stand for our national anthem taking a shot at the nfl now these people have talked about all these heroes and like bringing more jobs and like the economy doing well and um, a child tax credit, you know, um, all these companies coming back. No jeers, no house shaking. But you talk about Colin Kaepernick because who's leading that movement? Colin Kaepernick. <laughs> And we stand for our national anthem. And then they just all go crazy. First of all, you didn't even have a national anthem at the fucking State of the Union address. I didn't hear it. Like, what are you talking about? So it was just really unnecessary. And again, that was a part where Trump was appealing to his base. You know, I don't think Republicans are that fucking stupid. You know, um, but I think that Trump supporters are. And they need that, you know, they're so hateful. Like they have to have, um, it's like a pinata doll. They have to have something to hit, you know, they can't just say like, we're doing great. The economy's good. You know, we're, we're making more jobs. That's not good enough for them. They, they, they can't handle that because you know what? That's too much like being a fucking public servant, serving people and they're devils they can't handle the goodness they have to be negative they can't just say everything's good we're doing so great everybody's you know whatever they have to find somebody to beat up on to jump to be lower than them this is this is just how their their sick little minds work you know that was just it was really unnecessary it was really unnecessary and to see how excited his base got about that it just shows like how petty Petty, 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 petty they are. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I just wrote down that they all have Botox in their heads. Pence, Ryan, Trump, you know, they had these little crow's feet and all this Botox stuff on their heads. You couldn't really, couldn't, it's kind of hard, honestly, to see like their real reactions because of the Botox. So Pence was just squinting. You know, you could see some things. He, he kind of looked a little bit uncomfortable. Like, what? Wait, huh? So, I feel like maybe Ryan had more to do with the speech than Pence. Because he seemed a little bit surprised his damn self. Trump was clapping for himself. This fool. <laughs> bless his heart. This fool walked up to the podium clapping for himself. Seriously. Like, he was he was already, like, clapping for himself walking to the podium. Now, if you watch the White House live, I was waiting on there. I want to watch the official video. So I'm like, I'll be on YouTube, the White House live page, and it's going to come on. So it wasn't coming on. I was like, what is going on? Something's not right. Because like, you know, right at, the, you know, people, those people are really on time. So I clicked to another live stream and it showed Trump walking to the podium. 
the White House Live did not show Trump walking to the podium. And they didn't show it because the Black Caucus decided to sit and not give him a standing ovation, I guess, when he walked in. And so that's something their news reporters noted. And they had, like, their, like, African-centered, like, print and cloth on their, like, little bow ties and ties. And they had the little things right here. So they were representing, you know. They look good, too. They look really good, okay. Uh, you know, like, when we be in a seat full of just all white people, we just stand out. Like, we be shining, okay. So, um... They were there. They didn't clap for him. So Trump decided to clap for himself. Like, he's a big... Gosh, he's such a fucking child. <laughs> he's... Like, calm down. People are gonna clap for you. So all during the speech, like, when people were, like, slowing down with the claps, because sometimes, like, he was wanting them to thank the person fucking twice. Like, they just clapped and stood up, and then they would sit back down, and then Trump would say, and I just want to thank you for your service. And then they would have to stand up and clap again. And so, so like, Trump would, like, help them and, like, clap with them. And I was like, this is a fucking mess. Um, so, again, he only talks about Americans. He don't want to talk about, like... Like, what makes Americans Americans? Like, we're not just fucking Americans. Like, we have a history and a culture. Like, we didn't just pop up on this fucking country. Like, we come from different places. And he doesn't want to acknowledge any of that. Like, he just wants to whitewash the whole fucking America. So if you want to be American, then you just have to get rid of, you know, um, anything that is separate from America. Like, you, you can't. It's like there's no celebration of like culture or diversity or ethnicity or like differences or anything. Like all he just wants to talk about is like Americans, 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 Americans. And it's like we're not all the fucking same. You know what I'm saying? Like he's not like acknowledging like the fact that like America is a melting pot of all different types of people. Like. It, it doesn't really resonate with everybody when he talks about Americans, you know, and for people and groups that have been that have been like outcasts that have felt even though we're citizens, we felt like we're out of everything. You know, we're blocked out of access to certain things that are supposedly American. You know, he doesn't do a good job of trying to change that or anything like it's just like it's kind of like when he's talking, it's like I'm. It's like the people I'm talking to know who they are. If you don't, you don't fall into this, then you don't fall into this. I'm just talking, you know what I'm saying? Like there's no, there's no like little attempt to reach out at all, you know? And I feel like, um, it's a shame, you know, it's a shame that we've come this far. We've had so many conversations, national conversations, about diversity and ethnicity and like what makes Americans great and what makes Americans different and like who are Americans and everything and I feel like he's going backwards like he's just going backwards to this like white America thing you know um so he also and and I do want to I do want to acknowledge that there's some jobs that's good. That's a good thing. You know, I don't want to be all negative. There's some jobs. I've heard people talking shit about his jobs. They're like, Obama started it. Obama had jobs too. But it's like, damn, this is his only accomplishment. Like, let him have it. He he created some jobs. Let him have that. If he negotiated with companies to come back, let him have that. That's all he has. Let him have it. Fuck it. Good. Keep creating jobs. Do you know what I'm saying? There's no, there's no diss there. There's no diss there. Um... So, but then there's a lot of things that he talked about that's, like, coming soon. Um, they talked about people are going to get paid more next month at work. There's going to be some child tax credits. There's going to be some job trainings, vocational trainings, programs. There's going to be some programs to help um, prisoners re-enter society. Um... There's a lot of, like, coming soon type of things. And, um, the funny thing is, he wanted claps for this the same way he wanted claps for the real accomplishments. Like, he wanted, like, he he was talking about it. I caught that the shit hadn't happened yet. It's gonna happen. But he was talking about it as if, like, 
it's happened. It's just going to start. Like, he was, he, he really wanted a lot of credit for a lot of bullshit that we have not seen with our own squash yet. Okay. Now, there is one thing, um, because I have four pages, so I'm sorry I didn't mention this sooner. But, this is about the, um, the dreamers. This is really fucked up. This is really fucked up. So, basically, they're just going to handpick who they want to stay. I mean, that's what he said. I mean, you could look at this any kind of way you want to look at it. But basically, he said the dreamers are going to need to have, quote, good moral character to become citizens over a 12-month period. He said there will be no more green cards. It's going to be based on skills, merit, and the safety for America and people that want to contribute and work. So, you know, the government shut down. They had a big hoopla over the dreamers. These are the children that are here to go to school. Um, and basically, he's saying that they're just going to handpick who they want to stay. And they're going to kick the rest out. And um, it's going to hurt a lot of families. It's going to hurt a lot of people. But that's what terrorists do. Like, that's that's what, that's domestic terrorism. Like, that's what they do. Like, they want to incite fear. Um, they want to disrupt families. They want to change the migration patterns. Like, you just want to, like, um, disable groups of people and keep them as powerless as humanly possible. So that whenever they attack, they're enemies have already been weakened you know it's gonna um it's gonna be really sad because the people that you think are gonna fight for the dreamers are not the democrats and other groups they're gonna back down and they're gonna back down because they're gonna try to protect the other dreamers that are allowed to stay so it's gonna break up people Um, he talked about keeping Guantanamo Bay open. Now, Guantanamo Bay, if you remember, um, the soldiers got in trouble because they put those little hats on them and they were like putting leashes on them and making them crawl around doing some sick sexual stuff to them. People were brought to Guantanamo Bay without any court hearings, without any representation. People didn't even know their names, who these people even were. It's just like a hole that they could just capture anybody and put them in there and just accuse them of being a terrorist. Now, there was people released from Guantanamo Bay. Um, and these people were innocent. And they had been tortured for nothing. Now... Guantanamo Bay has a long history, so you can go look all that up, right? My concern is this new national, federal, black extremity, black extremist group. And if they're going to be eligible for this Guantanamo Bay, like put the dots together and put you all on a list, said you're all... Uh, terrorists, extremists, enemies of America, I guess. And now he's wanting to reopen Guantanamo Bay. For who? Who's going to go in there? So that's something to watch. <clears throat> he mentioned Israel. Because <laughs> he's stupid. He's a fucking idiot. He is so fucking stupid. Listen to this. He mentions Israel. Now y'all know that Israel and Palestinian people have been fighting since the fucking Bible, okay, for a long time. So, I guess he decides that Jerusalem is the capital of, of Israel. Um, the United Nations corrected him and said, you actually don't have the power to do that. And they, like, had some kind of vote. So Trump says, well, this is why we're not going to give um, – uh, these countries no money no more. We're just only going to give money to our friends, our allies. 
This shows what type of brain we are working with. This man is dead wrong. He has no business. He's the president here. He ain't the president of Israel. He's the president here. He ain't the president of Palestine. He ain't the president of, of Iran. He ain't the president of Iraq. He's the president here. But this fool thinks he has the power to go over there and decide what's the fucking state capital. That's that white supremacy. That's that white chip. Okay? They think they're leaders of all the brown and black people. Okay? So, um, the United Nations says, no, that's not how we do things. The whole point of the United Nations is just to recognizing all the powers and, you know, being diplomatic, trying to prevent wars, coming to the table together, doing what's good for the most people. This fool says, fuck them, I'm not giving them no, no more money since they don't want to listen to me. Childish. Um, I do want I do want to acknowledge that soldier. Um, I didn't catch his name, but he was wearing a V for Valor. And that was the soldier that, you know, almost made me cry because he saved his friend by, um, well, it was another soldier he saved by doing the, um, the CPR. So, just a few more notes. So, <clears throat> Trump is still with the heroin epidemic. <laughs> okay, so, I just want to know who was on heroin. Like, which one of his fucking kids got on heroin? Or which ex-girlfriend from Vegas was a heroin stripper type bitch? Like, what the fuck is it with him and this heroin? We got alcoholism, cocaine meth, all types of other shit, pills, I mean, all types of other shit. This fool is sterile with the heroin shit. And he said something about shooting up. So I think maybe he has a fear of needles. Maybe he really doesn't like the drugs you do with needles or something. But, um, the heroin shit is for his supporters. Pence and Ryan don't give a fuck about heroin. Stupid. Stupid. Dumbass. Um, so he talks about bullying Cuba and Venezuela, which is really fucking sad. Really pitiful, really pitiful. Um, you can look up the news. I don't know that much about Cuba, but you can look up the news about Venezuela, and it's really fucked up how America's been doing them. Last maybe year, maybe two, yeah, maybe year, maybe two years. I think Obama was still there when this started happening. Um, they fucked with their currency. The leader died. There's been, like, some civil war stuff going on, and now... Trump is just, you know, he, he, they're bullies. They're bullies. This is what the fuck they do. Um, so then he talked about North Korea. Now this may not be popular with a lot of y'all, but I'm not on here to make friends. My views on North Korea, <clears throat> because I believe in the right to defend yourself, I believe everybody has the right to defend themselves. Every single person on earth has the right to defend themselves. So yes, I believe that North Korea has the right to defend themselves. Period. They don't have the right to come over here and fuck with me. But they have the right to defend themselves if somebody comes over there and fucks with them. Period. Okay? So I don't like, you know, I'm the type of person that if I don't bother you, don't come bother me. Like I'm in my house, minding my own business. Don't come over here bothering me. That's how I feel about North Korea. I feel they are the same way like me. They're like, I'm over here. Leave me the fuck alone. Don't come bother me. I won't bother you. Has North Korea sent spies over here? Have they sent anybody over here? Do they have terrorist cells over here? No. Not at all. Not at all. If you meet Koreans, they're very nice, sweet people. Like, seriously. Like, Korean people... They may be a little bit, like, scared of you, like, because they're, they're, like, insulated. Like, they're, like, to themselves. Like, they're to their families. They're not out here trying to, like, be involved in everybody else's shit, you know? So, when you first meet them, they may be a little bit, like, who the fuck are you, you know? But if you ever went to school with them or really got to know them or, like, got to meet their families, the elders in their group, like, they're really, really, really nice people. 
Do you know what I'm saying? They really don't have plans to hurt anybody. That's just not what they fucking do. Do you know what I'm saying? So, um, I respect Koreans, North Koreans and South Koreans. And I believe they do have the right to defend themselves. And I believe with somebody like Trump in office, of course, it's going to make them scared. These, these, these are conquerors. These are people who throughout history have gone through different countries, taken over their governments, spread all of their messages to their people. I mean, these are people that go to different countries, extract the brightest minds, the best talents, and bring them over here. They totally disrupt countries. And North Korea has every right to be who they want to be. Okay? Now, there's a story about this man being put in jail for 15 years doing hard labor. Of course, they have a heart for the man, okay? But let's not talk about heart issues. Let's just talk about logistics. Doesn't America have lots and lots and lots of prisons? We have county prisons, state prisons, federal prisons. Don't we imprison more people than any other country per capita? Yeah. Don't we torture people in prison? Yes. Don't we medicate them, do experiments on them? Don't some of them pop up dead? Yes. Absolutely. So before you start working on a prison in North Korea and trying to free them people, you need to try to free people in America prisons. There's a whole group called the Innocence Project which is totally dedicated to liberating innocent people that have been put in prison for no fucking reason. Some people have been put in prison for faulty um, faulty evidence, all that DNA, fiber analysis bullshit, some of that shit it was fucked up. Some of them had bad judges or crooked cops or whatever, whatever. Some, I mean, it's just all, I mean, the stories get so deep, you know? You have to really go look into that. Um... I think that's all I want to say about the State of the Union dress. I mean, the highlights were Trump basically trying to start a war between blacks and Mexicans. Um, Trump talking about all the groups that he's going to bully. MS-13, ISIS, North Korea, Cuba, Venezuela. Um, and just to be clear, like, okay, MS-13... Should he go after MS-13? Of course. That's not his job. He is the president of the United States. That is your local police's job. So him saying it from the State of the Union address, that, that to me feels like bullying. You know, it feels like bullying because there's so many other gangs. What about Bloods and Crips and Vice Lords and King of This and Queen of That and... Aryan Brotherhood, all these gangs. There's a whole fucking TV show with all the gangs outlined. Boom, 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 boom. All their names outlined. They have a police database with all the gang members in it. They can identify them by their tattoos. So what are you waiting for? If you're getting rid of, like, why why are you picking out some gangs and not others, first of all? Why are you not mentioning no white gangs? Because they're the scariest fucking ones this year. The KKK, you didn't mention them. But... So, so you're picking out this gang of, of all people. And this gang has been known for a long, 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 long time. So why this? Why now? I don't know. The fact that they just happen to be like brown Spanish speaker type people and you're connecting this to immigration and shit. It just sound. it's just kind of like that to me is picking on them. Look at all them gangs in Chicago. Look at all them gangs in L.A. Look at all. Look at all the gangs. And you're just going to pick them? Nick, like, you should have had a whole fucking sheet of paper. Like, I'm coming after Nick in alphabetical order if you're serious about this gang shit. I'm coming after this one, this one, this one, that 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 one. Like, but you just said MS-13. That, to me, is bullying, picking on them. Um... <clears throat> So, yeah, so he just basically, I mean, they, they, he did have highlights. So he started off with agreement. Everybody agrees. America's this. We're doing better. We're, he was sniffling, breathing. <laughs> he didn't cough, though. 
Like he was sniffing. He ain't doing all this type of stuff. Okay. Um, he talked about one family, one people, same destiny, same flag. Faith and family and God we trust. That was that was from Mike Pence people. You know. Um He talked about the right to try experimental drugs in the hospitals when you're near death. Um, <laughs> I kept writing down every time he caught by herself. That shit was so fucking funny. He said Motor City's back up and going. Which is cool. <clears throat> That's what's up. So yeah, that's it. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Thank you for listening and watching my thoughts. Oh yeah. Okay. One more thing. One more thing. One more thing. I write messy, so I can't really see my own writing. Okay. So there was this, um, ice agent that like MS-13 wanted dead or something. Why Trump didn't know if his name was DJ or CJ? <laughs> this fool got up on the podium at the State of the Union and said, Yeah, I wanna I wanna mention this guy, you know, I don't know if his name is DJ or CJ. He said I can call him either one. I guess I'll just call him CJ. CJ Yeah, that really happened. Um I'm going to put the link below because it's right here on YouTube. You can watch. It's an hour and 20 minutes. So, like, get your popcorn. Get ready. And um, if you watched it as well and you have thoughts, let me know what you think in the comments. Have a good day. Bye-bye.